government promise to cut the region's emissions by 20 percent below 1990 levels by 2020, Britain has to reduce its emissions by another 34 percent in the next 10 years. Hmm. I wonder how they're going to do that. It's just like when they talk about, oh, population sustainability. Britain or uh, the UK has to be 30 million people. It's 70 million now. What's everybody going to just stop having children and get sick and die? Because that means that 30 to 40 million people have to die without anybody being born for that to work. And that's sustainability. Then you have Ted Turner on Charlie Rose talking about there's too many people out there doing too many things. And that's why we have global warming. We're doing the suicidal things in the next, you know, 20, 30 years. Temperature's going to go up 8 to 10 percent, 8 to 10 degrees. Can you can you imagine 8 to 10 degrees? We're going to have a lot of people die. A lot of people die. And then the ones that survive, they're going to live in a you know failed state like Somalia while they eat each other. They're going to be cannibals. Today, too many people on the earth. Meanwhile, the Czech Republic have people waking up to this fact. They're saying to themselves, you know, Ted Turner's behind a lot of these vaccinations. He talks about population sustainability. Maybe I shouldn't poison my child. Maybe that's a bad idea. But people here are really just ready to roll up their sleeves. I guess the fear-mongering, though, again, did not work as well as they had hoped, as well as they had planned with this swine flu pandemic. The headlines out of Reuters were, under 30% would take swine flu vaccination, if not mandatory. And then you read into the article, it's actually 18%, less than one in five. Less than one in five. I think that they were hoping for at least one in three, to be quite honest, before they started to roll it out. I think that really had them pull back. And I think that's why no one's covering right now that they're ready and poised for pandemic level six. Pandemic level six. They're just going to say, well, we have to consider the severity of the disease as well. It's not just blanket pandemic level six. Well, it is blanket pandemic level six, but we're going to Pick and choose where it's the most severe, and that's where the bad things will happen. But again, you're giving them all these rights, carte blanche, basically. The World Health Organization, within days, is going to declare the first influenza pandemic in 41 years. They're saying that 125 deaths around the world are the reason. I can't even say that 125 people have died in this country. All we know from the mainstream media is the first people that they were trying to pin it on had other illnesses, and then all of a sudden everybody was dying from the swine flu. But I never saw anybody in the mask. I didn't see a real pandemic. I didn't see an outbreak of regular flu. But they're saying, oh, it's going to mutate. It's going to piggyback on this regular flu. It's coming to get you. Ooh, the boogeyman. And then they prep you with things like Earth 2100, pandemic levels, quarantines. Can you? What will it be like in this country if the troops start lining up to quarantine people, what 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 nightmare scenario could impose that? Will it be another terrorist attack by Al Qaeda? Al Qaeda. I mean, give me a break. While you know Barack Obama is over in Saudi Arabia kissing the tushy of the the prince there, I think it's Faisal. While they're buddying it up, the new o Osama bin Laden tape comes out. Oh, I'm Osama bin Laden, and I'm coming to get you. And your policies in the Middle East have to speak louder than words. In a way, that's true. You know, he says he's going to get out of the Middle East. He's not getting out of the Middle East. See, they always make it legitimate when they put out something phony like this to make you think, oh, th there's a possibility he's still alive and he's really talking about it. Meanwhile, you have a head intelligence official from the United States saying none of the bin Laden tapes have ever been faked. No, they're all 100% real. All the audio tapes, all the videotapes of the boogeyman, but we can't find them. We just can't find Osama bin Laden. It's just been so hard. The number one terror threat out there. And we're, we're not allowed to see Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in, in an open court system, in a real trial. We can't see that. We can just read about how he was waterboarded 183 times over a three-month period. Over a three-month period. That's admitted. I mean, what, what crimes did this guy commit? What was his role? I, I, I mean, he could have been involved in some aspect of the plot, not even known anywhere near the full-scale picture because they love to compartmentalize roles, and it's an international intelligence organization. In other words, you know, they're shipping money in from both Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. They're training the uh, hijackers on U.S. bases. 
Abel Danger is following some of these guys. They can't get the FBI to look at them. And the FBI says they know about two of them, but the CIA didn't warn them about some of them. But the CIA should have known, and so should the FBI, because the FBI had an informant renting and living with two of the hijackers. I mean, it reeks of a black op. Reeks of it. Reeks of it. And that international intelligence organization has never been dismantled. It's only grown bigger and bigger and bigger. And the Middle East is one of their prizes, one of their gems. They want that Eurasian Union. They want that North American Union. They want that new world order. I'm sitting in the office earlier today, and I'm just going through all these DVDs because we're kind of moving around for an editing suite, getting another ed editor in there for Invisible Empire, which I've been working on. And I found this George Bush speech. Uh, basically, it was a... I don't know, it was like five or six speeches while he was the president of the United States. And a lot of them I had seen, but some of them I had not seen. And they were new angles. And this guy laid it out. He wanted a new world order. And he wasn't the guy who thought about it. He wasn't the first one to say new world order. Hitler wrote about it in his diaries. H.G. Wells wrote a book about it. It had been written about long before that. And it continues to be spoken about, especially by Henry Kissinger who has been advising just about every administration since he supposedly left office. There's a backdoor guy. There's a guy that helped the Bush administration in ways that we can't even imagine. And that continues to advise the Obama administration. That has a globalist agenda where population control is not only acceptable, but encouraged. Where genocide is the norm. Where it's okay to talk about biospecific weapons for, for races and gender. These are the kind of things they put in policy papers. They talk about in think tanks. And they're not talking about theirs, them and theirs. They're not talking about them. Oh, I doubt they're going to inject themselves with a bioweapon. They're talking about you and yours, the middle class, the poor, the third world nations out there. That's who they're talking about, the general populace, the sheeple, the chattel. That's what they think of you. You're nothing more than an animal to them when they talk about gender-specific bioweapons and them injecting you with it. And that's what this whole swine flu thing is eventually going to be about. Just injecting you in the arm with a delicious dose of H1N whatever. And then you're starting to cough. <laughs> it's not that bad. They tried to save me. I'm going to make my way through it. The government loves me. Meanwhile, you'll be in your FEMA camp asking for your government cheese and your blanket and hoping your kid's going to make it too. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmeson back after this.